Coming up next on City Scene, we'll hear about what our community is doing to support and celebrate our veterans. Plus, we'll learn about a program that is doing something very special to recover and honor some of the forgotten heroes. It all starts now on City Scene. Welcome to another edition of City Scene. I'm your host, Mary Allen. Veterans Day is quickly approaching and here to tell us about some local resources as well as the upcoming Veterans Day Parade is Palmer Miller. Welcome back to the show, Palmer. So Palmer, I know you've been an advocate for veterans for many years. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your new position as the Veterans Affair Coordinator. Well, new, it's um, probably the last time we heard here, about two years ago, maybe a year and a half, whatever. But um, I work now with the Congressional District Office, the Office of Congresswoman Ann Kirkpatrick, and I am the Arizona District 1 um, Veterans Affairs caseworker. We do, we do constituent work, okay? So, and what that means is that if a veteran comes in or their family and they have a problem or, or they have, or they're trying to, to, to get through the VA system, uh, maybe with healthcare or, or their benefits itself and they're running into to brick walls, um, we are one of the areas, you know, you always hear if, if uh, if you run into a problem, go see your congressman. Well, we, do, we don't do that, but, but we do um, um, go, go directly to the VA or to any of the federal agencies and try to get a resolve, or at least we try to get an answer for them of why it's taking so long. So what kind of services would that entail? Healthcare. We have a lot of veterans who are having problems with, with just trying to get into the VA healthcare system. Um, a lot of our older veterans, our World War II and our Korean, you know, um, I think we talked about this last time, is that, you know, a lot of them, a lot of them have never asked the VA for anything. Today is, is the, the trying to get veteran benefits itself. Um, maybe a gentleman um, or, or, a, or, a, or a, a, a woman veteran um, had applied to the VA two, three years ago, and they're still waiting they're still waiting for a decision on a rating that, they, that, that they're pretty sure they're going to get um, because of the backlog and, and so forth. So again, what we do is what I do is, is I will go directly to the VA and then see, what we, see what we can do. The inquiry, it's, it's, all, it's all about the inquiry, about, about what we can do and how can we go about getting this resolved quicker than, than normal. So I know last time too we spoke about <coughs> Pinal County having um, many, many veterans, mm -hmm. and there were more services becoming available. Can you tell us about some of that? Sure. Um, we now have, uh, here in Casa Grande, on Marshall Street, we now have a, a full-time uh, veterans benefits counselor. His name is Brian Lauterbach, and, and he's there um, three days, and he, he's officed here in Casa Grande, but because of the, of the area, he also has an office in Maricopa for, for two days. That's, that's one of the first steps that, you, that a veteran needs to go to. If they've never applied for, for, for any type of veteran benefits, see Brian. Go to the American Legion. Go to the VFW. They have volunteer service officers that can, that can help them to get to a point, and then they can, they can uh, get in with, with Brian's uh, agency too. But, but also we have a lot of organizations, a lot of private organizations and non um, nonprofit organizations that have come in and really have stepped in to uh, to assist and uh, to get to get our veterans and their families taken care of. One here in the area um, is what we is is the the acronym is HOHP, and it's honor, hire, and help our vet, our heroes of Pinal County. We have now um, through the uh, through the support of the Elks Lodge, the American Legion, the VFW, the Marine Corps League all those type of organizations, and there's quite a few that uh, we now have it wrapped. It doesn't say health, health department anymore, and uh, it says our heroes of Pinal County. And uh, that will be going out, it's a, it's a mobile outreach center that will be going out within the, within the county to all the cities. Um, we will probably find, it, find, find that on the road maybe once or twice a week, maybe, or um, we, we, we know that we're going to hit the major cities once a quarter. But in that van, 
there's going to be agencies, there's going to be people that help, that will help um, apply for a job, that will help uh, write a resume, that's going to help um, um, apply for VA benefits, okay? Um, a lot of things. Uh, there may be, ref there may be a, a military, a medical, excuse me, a medical uh, um, um, professional on board that may be able to refer them you know, check, you know, look and see what their problem is and, and refer them to a, another medical agency that will help, you know, at maybe a low cost or whatever. So tell us about the different military organizations that we have in town. Well, we have, of course, we, two of the oldest here in, 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 in Casa Grande is the American Legion and, and the VFW, uh, the Veterans of Foreign Wars. And uh, the American Legion, the Veterans of Foreign Wars is located on 2nd Street and they've been, they've been there for years. And then our American Legion Post 8 is uh, right across the street from the historical building, the, the museum. Um, within those organizations, not only do we have the, the, our veterans, but then we have auxiliary programs and we have sons of the American Legion. A lot of people are, are, are coming, like I said, coming together and, and doing good things. They have different events throughout the year that uh, help our children, not only our veterans, but, but uh, um, like American Legion Baseball and, and so forth like that. Marine Corps League is a, is a fantastic organization. Um, and they're all based, like the Marine Corps League is, of course, United States Marines. And uh, they do um, Toys for Tots, um, help, they help the homeless. Um, they are constantly um, out in the community. We have the U.S. Uh, Navy uh, um, submarine uh, organization here also in Casa Grande. You think of submarines, it should be water, um, but uh, we have an organization and um, a lot of good people that, that, um, that work with that too. So if somebody is interested in, in volunteering for one of those organizations or even becoming a member, mm -hmm. how do they go about doing that? First thing I would say is just get on the internet. Look up the American Legion. And then once you get to the American Legion, look up American Legion and Casa Grande. Now the American Legion and, and most of the uh, um, organizations now have their, have their own websites. So just Google it, okay? Um, but, or take for instance the, the American Legion um, here in Casa Grande on Mondays and Thursdays. They have a coffee in the morning. It starts about nine o'clock and I've seen, I've seen them leave about 11, 11.30. And it, it's, a, it's a great time. You don't have to be a member, but there's, there's donuts and coffee and, 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 and good conversation. And they also talk about different events, what's going on in the community. So we have an upcoming Veterans Day Parade. Tell us about that. Yes, we do. This is going to be the ninth year. Uh, we're, 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 again, we're pretty excited about what we do every year. Um, it's going to be on November 7th. Um, so we ask everyone to come out, um, support. Please bring your flag or bring some type of a, of a, of a sign that says, welcome home, or, or hello veteran, or we love you, or whatever. Palmer, thank you so much for coming on the show again. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I, I'd like to take about a minute and just thank the city of Casa Grande. Um, you know, I've, I've been doing, I've been doing mil, uh, military or veteran advocate work for a long, long time in different capacities. And uh, these last few years, the city has just stepped up. Um, just in last May, um, the, the city of Casa Grande did a proclamation. The mayor came out and did a proclamation of being a Purple Heart City. That, that means a lot to a lot of people. And it honors them. And that's something, that's something that will, will be with this city forever. And we thank you for that. Um, we thank you for, for, for supporting us in the parade. For each year, again, it gets bigger and bigger. And um, more people take, you know, they step up and do things. Um, just, again, the, 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 the downtown uh, um, event that will happen the night before, that's truly amazing. It really is. You know, um, it's those, those people downtown now that, that uh, would just like to say thank you. Um, so, again, um, I appreciate everything that the city has done. I appreciate the support within the city and the county and, and all the other the cities around. Um, if, you, if you look at the news, 
you know, it's sometimes it's very, um, it's heart wrenching sometimes. But again, thank you very much. Thank you, I appreciate that. For more information on available Veterans Resources or the Veterans Day Parade, contact Palmer Miller at 520-316-0839. It's time for a short break. When we come back, we'll learn about an important project that locates American veterans and puts them to rest. This is an amazing, amazing uh, piece, of, uh, piece of news that we've that I believe that the city of Casa Grande uh, should be very, very proud of. And uh, not only the city of Casa Grande, but I have to also uh, say the city of Eloy. Last Friday, I had the honor of attending um, a ceremony, um, the Arizona Veterans Hall of Fame. And two gentlemen that are sitting with me today, who are also very good close friends, um, were inducted into the Hall of Fame. And one is Mr. Robert Delcy. He lives here in Casa Grande. He was a Vietnam veteran, um, Purple Heart, and uh, has, has for, the, for, for as far as, as I have known him, he has um, gone out and, 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 and assisted and helped and honored our veterans, um, assisted with homeless veterans. Um, with Robert, Robert is unique because if you see um, his necklace he makes these and he gives them out from, from, from his heart um, to our veterans and their families. So he's always honoring. I think when he goes to sleep, he honors. But the thing is, is most important is that this is an exciting um, um, time. We haven't had um, a, a person inducted into the Hall of Fame, the Veterans Hall of Fame of the state of Arizona, since around 2003. So this is, this is very, very unique. My, the other gentleman, a good friend of mine, is Mr. Jim Sylvester. He, um, I've, I've known him for many, many years working uh, with the American Legion and the American Legion Riders, and now he works with children um, at, at the, um, at the um, Boy State, the Boy State, the American Legion Boy State. And again, he's one individual that has that has a huge heart. And um, I'm, like I said, I'm just very, very honored to be sitting with these gentlemen and to be, uh, to be part of that uh, ceremony that happened uh, on Friday. <clears throat> Jim, Robert, I mean, it's been, a, it's been an honor for me as, as a good friend. But um, I'd like to have you say a few words if you don't mind. I don't mind. Okay. <laughs> I, I want to thank uh, Dan, and Kirkpatrick for uh, putting me in for, for or putting both of us in for the, this uh, honor. Uh, it's been an awesome endeavor, and uh, I, continue, I will continue to uh, uh, approach and, and uh, help all the veterans and, and, uh, and their families that I can, as long as I can. Robert? Well, I also want to thank you, of course. Uh, as you know, I've told you that uh, even when I first been inducted and you wrote the letter, I said, I'm not worthy, I'll never do it, forget it. So I went to Cooley's to meet my other buddies that served in Vietnam and all of us disappeared into the community and never, we never realized who were the veterans who were not. Well, I told them a little bit about it and they, oh, they just uh, hounded me and said, you go right back and you better accept it. And, uh, which you yes, did. Which I did. <laughs> and I said, you know what, I, I kept telling uh, Palmer, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. And uh, these uh, Vietnam veterans out of Coolidge, this is where I went to school, this is where I graduated. I said, you better get back over there. And, and uh, so I had to tuck my tail and, and they said, you're not only representing yourself, you're representing the combat veteran and you're also representing the Vietnam veteran. So it's been a tremendous honor. When we went to that ceremony, I, I didn't realize how how classy that ceremony was, how intricate, and how and to be among so many other uh, warriors there, I just felt so humble and such a yeah. uh, so honored because everybody there were were warriors, and I just felt uh, at home. <laughs> you know, it touches you. It touches you when you 
when I, when you when you see a gentleman or you see a veteran walk up on stage, okay, but it also it touches you when you hear about um, a soldier in 1979 to be honored and to be recognized as that gentleman. There was a gentleman from the Buffalo Soldiers mm -hmm. that was honored that day. Mm -hmm. That touches you because oh. because you realize that you know what um, you weren't born to be a veteran. Mm -mm. You weren't born, but as you, as you, as you went into the service, your, your ideas and your, and your way of thinking completely changed. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, thank you very, very much. This is an honor. This is truly an honor. Well, um, thank you, Palmer. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome back to City Scene. Joining me now to talk about the Missing in America project is local coordinator Bob Day. So tell us about the Missing in America project. It's a project that's active in 30 states. We're comprised of all volunteers. We have no paid personnel. We don't rent offices. We don't go on retreats. We don't do some things that other 501c3 organizations do. We are also a uh, combined federal campaign charity. And what that means is um, the federal government has looked at what we do, looked at our financials, and they've decided that it's on the up and up, up and it's in line for uh, contractors and active duty military or whoever else involved with the government. They could have money taken out of their paycheck and go directly into our, our funds. We are not corporate sponsored, so we owe our allegiance totally to the forgotten veterans that we go out to try and honor. And in my humble opinion, that's a tremendous plus because I don't have to worry about a lot of sidestepping with politics. It's to do what's right for the right reason. Well, tell us what your project is. Our primary mission is to locate, identify <coughs> leftover remains. Um, the staggering truth is that there are so many out there, it's unbelievable. We, when we identify some remains, once we're allowed by the funeral homes and cemeteries to, to actually get the data, we bounce it to the uh, National Cemetery Scheduling Office. The Veterans Administration then issues us uh, a formal indication that we've run across a veteran who is still eligible to be placed with honors. What we do then is we get them placed in appropriate urns because too many times we get them in, I've literally picked up a veteran in a plastic bag tied in a knot. Uh, we get them in cardboard boxes. Uh, we get them in beat up canisters. We get them from storage facilities where they were found when the, when the rented facility was sold and the, the items were sold to clear it out again. So we get them in a, an appropriate metal urn and then we arrange for an escort to the closest Veterans Memorial Cemetery. We have uh, certified trained funeral escort riders. Um, we escort them between our country's colors. Uh, our take on it is, is this last journey on earth for this veteran should be between his country's colors. And then we get them placed. The way we can do this for free, to where it doesn't cost, we don't cost the taxpayers money and we don't cost the Veterans Administration funds, we don't draw for that. It's by using the state or the federal uh, cemeteries because of that letter from the Veterans Administration, there's no charge. So that's our primary goal. However, we also help work with uh, spouses and children of veterans. What a lot of people don't know is that spouses and children are eligible to be placed as well as just the veteran. So that's a different, a different twist. So how do you identify the families? There's a lot of different ways. The, the easiest duty is when we have a DD-214 or a service number, but with as little as four pieces of information, um, DOB, d date of birth, date of death, social security number, and a full name, with as little as that, the Veterans Administration can tell us if we found um, a veteran. So what kind of numbers are we looking at? Nationally, Missing in America Project has laid to rest over 2,700 veterans who sat on shelves. On the national level, the longest sitting veteran that I personally was part of laying to rest had passed away in 1934. He sat on a shelf in Nevada until 2010. 
in Arizona, uh, Arthur Uffman, Pauline Uffman, passed away one in 93. The other held on for a year, passed away in 94. They sat on a shelf till we laid them to rest in 2010. Just in southern Arizona, in less than five years, we have laid to rest 240 veterans who were forgotten. And we have not even begun to work the whole state effectively. Pinal County uh, hasn't been worked much before. We had one full body situation. 95% of what we work with are cremains, but every now and then we get a full body um, situation. But really, I haven't even started really reaching out in Pinal County, but thanks to um, Thanks to some local organizations, I got a call not long ago. There was a gentleman who was dropped off at the Eloy Veterans Center. Um, his daughter wasn't able to get him where he needed to go. He passed in 09. And Jim gave me a call um, that they had him. Luckily, he had his papers. So we escorted him up to Prescott. So the reason I bring that out is already, and we've hardly gotten started, already we've had one case where there was a veteran who needed to be taken to where he should be and laid to rest. So how often do you do the burials? In Arizona, we do them twice a year, a spring and a fall mission. Just last Saturday, we had our fall mission for Southern Arizona. We laid to rest 29 veterans and one spouse. So that brings us up to that 240 uh, figure in Southern Arizona, just in Southern Arizona. It still is rather sobering. Palmer was there. He received a flag, folded flag from one of the honor guards. Um, he's been to missions previously. I think he would agree that it's just a sobering situation to sit there and look at all those urns and reflect on the fact that they were misplaced somewhere. So there has been a recent, recent one, and 29 more veterans and one spouse are where they belong. Tell us about some volunteer opportunities that might be available. We have um, a lot of people uh, who don't ride motorcycles. We're not all just a motorcycle escort situation. We have genealogists. We have people uh, gathering names. We have volunteers that go through uh, some protocol training to understand how to go to a, a cemetery or a funeral home and present themselves and get them to realize that if they'll work with us, not only is it good for the veteran, but they'll look good too and it'll be good for them. Um, so we have volunteers that do that. We have people that work on databases, um, a lot of different ways. Our national website is miap.us. And if you go there, there's ways to indicate that you'd like to be a volunteer. Um, depends on what the volunteer type activity is. Let's say you'd like to be part of a team that goes in and convinces the funeral home to let us look through their records and actually come up with this information so we can bounce it and find out how many are vets. Um, you would receive a, uh, a hit back from somebody nationally who specifically his job is to help you understand how to do that effectively and make sure you're covered by insurance and communicate to this other party that there isn't much liability at all. In all the cases we've done, we've only had one case where a family came forth afterwards and demanded uh, the veteran back. Um, and it isn't that big of a deal in cremains. Every veterans administrator of a, of a facility for veterans will disinter somebody at no car cost. But the family will have to prove that they are in first position and they should have it because a lot of us feel that once they're there, that's where they belong. But a family could get somebody back. And that kind of potential problem, we can help train somebody with to where it's, uh, it's easier to do that job. So miap.us, um, if it's locally, they could get a hold of me. My email is pointmanusn at gmail.com. So do you work collaboratively with other organizations? Yes. It takes uh, a lot of organizations to pull this off. MIAP is not large enough. We have no staff. We could not do this alone. Um, since the beginning, one organization that's uh, been integral to this working has been the American Legion. I believe in somewhere around 2007, 2008, at a national uh, American Legion uh, meeting and such, they endorsed us uh, officially. Um, that helped tremendously because MIEP, it's like, well, who's that? You know, American Legion. Almost everybody and their uncle knows who that is. 
um, people such as Palmer Miller, a veteran himself, okay? Yes, he's a representative for Ann Kirkpatrick in a veteran capacity, but he knows as a veteran what this is all about and why we need it. There are times when we need people in these political circles to help people in political circles who may not be veterans get the hint that this is important, this is, this is the right kind of thing to be involved with. So why is this so important to you? A lot of good reasons, but one reason that maybe gets overlooked sometimes, and for me personally, there's a lot of things in our culture right now that have us head to head, or it's divisive. I believe that, and it goes along with our escort, that we've been accused of being a bunch of gray beards who want to jump on their motorcycles and get seen rolling down the street. That's not it at all. Let's say a mom or a dad are at an intersection and it's blocked because we're escorting through and the police have got it blocked and whatever, and a child says, well, why do we have to stop? What's going on here? If the parent has any clue that that's a veteran that's being honored, that sets the stage for that child to get the feeling that, whoa, honoring veterans means something, doesn't it? Um, that's one of the reasons for me it's important. The other reason is it's really, really close to not leaving anybody behind in combat. It is not combat here, but these people stepped up to serve. Um, some of them are highly decorated and they've fallen through the cracks. Either they checked off the grid or family dynamics, whatever, doesn't matter. We owe it to not only them, but we owe it to the fabric of our society to not be so busy that we forget that. We need it. <coughs> Sorry. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, it's an honor and privilege to do this. Thank you and the city for having me. I think I would like to add that we are just getting started in Pinal County and there already is a working relationship with veteran service organizations, but we do need uh, people who would like to help us see these veterans where they belong. For more information about the Missing in America project, visit miap.us. Okay, here's your chance to win two movie tickets. What is the date and time for the ninth annual Veterans Day Parade? Submit your answer on our website, casagrandeaz.gov, just look for the City Scene logo. Good luck! That wraps up another edition of City Scene. If you have an idea for a City Scene topic, please let us know. Email us at pio at casagrandeaz.gov or give us a call at 520-421-8627. And don't forget to follow us on social media. I'm your host, Mary Allen. Thanks for watching. Remember, City Scene is your inside look at Casa Grande. See you next time.